Okay. 1.2 powers and exponents. I love powers and exponents. I think they're so much fun. Okay. So a power is the result of a repeated multiplication of the same factor. In a power, you have two components of a power. It's made up of a base and an exponent. Okay. The base is the larger number. The exponent is what it's raised to. So this is saying 5 cubed. Okay, 5 to the third, meaning if I wrote this out, both of these would look the same because they are the same thing. 5 cubed means I have 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, there are three fives there. Okay. The way I tell my older kids is, do you guys know that song, It's All About the Bass? Yes. <laughs> Everything with exponents is about the bass. Okay, it's all about this bass. That's how you can remember this. So my base is always the large number. Okay, base, exponent. So we are going to write the product using exponents. Okay, how would I write 13 times 13 times 13 times 13 in exponential form? What? 13 to the fourth power? Or? 13 to the fourth power. Now, <clears throat> did it say solve? Did it say, um, Simplify, did it say either of those two things? Yeah. No. So when it says write using um, the product using exponents, you're going to leave it in this form right here. That's how far they want you to go. They want it in exponential form. Okay? If they said write using exponents, then solve or then simplify, then you would multiply 13 times 13 times 13 times 13. Or on our calculators, do you know where the exponent button is? Maybe. But let's get them out and I'll show you. We'll talk about that. Let me get my little simplified calculator. You guys got calculators that look similar to this? Yeah. Okay. So if I turn it on and I press 13 and press this carrot button, do you see that beautiful little carrot button? That's what it's called? Uh, carrot. Carrot. Put it in. Okay. Oh, it looks like good. it's, if you look at the seven, go to the left and go up one. See that? That's called a carry. That little the arrow. Go yeah. up one? Yeah. So it should look like this. If you were typing it in your calculator, you would type the number 13 and you would press that button. And then you would press a four. Okay? And then press enter. It's not ducks or... There's what? Oh. Well, then you press something wrong. Two... You have to put a 4 in there still. That's why. Okay. And you get what? Uh, 28,561? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you get this when you press that button, correct? Yeah. Now, double check it for me. Do 13 times 13 times 13 times 13. Mm -hmm. You get the same answer? Yes. Is it much quicker to just press that carrot in that number? Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially if this is to the 12th power, right? <laughs> Or the 22nd power. It's going to make it way easier for us. Okay? So that's how I press an exponent when it's not just a squared. Anything higher than a squared. If it's a squared, I press this x squared button. Do you see that? So if I want 5 squared, okay? Which you guys should know what 5 squared is, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If I press 5 squared, I just press that x squared button. It's going to square it. Okay? If, in, if I want any exponent higher than the number 2, I have to use that carrot. <laughs> okay? But that's an easier way to do it. Cool? And on your test and quizzes and homework, they will specify if they want you to use a calculator or not for it. Okay? Mm -hmm. They don't want us to use a calculator. That means we got to multiply by a head. Okay. we got to get good at it. Now, here I have... 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2. How do I write that in exponential form? 0.2. 0.2 to the? Third. 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 Beautiful. Third, three, so it's 0.2 to the third. So I'm going to say 0.2 to the third. I can write it this way, okay? Or your book might write answers like this with it still in parentheses. Either is the same thing, okay? Either is fine. Okay, what happens when I have n times n times n times n times n times n? How do you write that in exponential form? You got a guess, Mammy? N to the sixth power? N to the sixth power. Yep. And I clearly can't do anything with that because it is a letter. <laughs> okay. N to the sixth power.
six power. There are six ins, so I put into the six power. <coughs> Bless you. Bless you. What about t times t times t times t times t? Yes, again. T to, the fifth power. t to the fifth power. Beautiful. And you have transformed all of those into exponential form. Questions on that? You know what? You know how to do the, uh, I forgot what was it called, um, exponent on the calculator. For which one? Of the second one. For this one? Yeah. Yeah. So on the second one on your calculator, you're going to want to put it in with parentheses. Here's why. Because that's a decimal point too, I need the parentheses around it or it's not going to read order of operations for me. Okay? So your parentheses are both the 8 and the 9. Do you see that? Okay, so I press the first parenthesis above the 8, then I'm going to press point 2, and then I press the second parenthesis, and then I'm going to press that carrot button again, and then I'm going to press the 3, and then I'm going to press enter. And what do you get when you do point 2 to the third? 0 0.008. Yes, 0 0.008, okay? So this turns into 0 0.008, beautiful. Which makes sense, because what's 2 times 2 times 2? 8. And this is a decimal, so you add two more, you add two more decimal points for every time you multiply decimal by decimal. Cool? Okay? So that's how you're going to put it. You have a question? No. Yeah. Just stretching. Sorry. Okay? And of course, we can only solve on the ones where they give us numbers. We can't solve on the ones that give us letters. There's nothing to do. Now, I have a question for you. Just a little fun question to throw out there. If I gave you um, 12 to the third, and I said to write this in multiplicative form, how would I change that? 12, 12. What? 12 times 3 times 12, 12 times 12. Beautiful, yes. So if I told you to change it back, it would be 12 times 12 times 12. Okay? Your book might ask you to go back and forth just to make sure you understand the concept. Cool? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we have this problem. It says, evaluate when x equals 0.5 and it says it's x to the fourth. What do I need to do? Gabby? Switch out the x for 0.5. Yeah, switch out the x for 0.5. So I have 0.5 to the Fourth power. fourth power, and it says evaluate, which means what? I need an actual answer. answer. How will I figure out an actual answer? What can I do? What do I need to do? Do what, Bree? I can't hear you. You can speak up. It's okay. Um, I could write it out, or I could do something that's a little bit quicker, which would be good. Oh, Use my calculator. How am I going to put it into my calculator? Parenthesis, point 0.5, into parenthesis, and then what button do I have to press? The carrot button, and then 4, and I press enter, and what do we get? 0.0625. Beautiful, 0.0625. So when it says evaluate, it wants that as my answer. Okay, so first, I have to substitute the 0.5 in for x. Then I plug it into my calculator and get my answer. Okay? I need you to show me this work here. That you physically plugged it in so I know what you did. And then give me the answer. Cool? Okay? Show me your work always. The more work, the better. You can never have too much work. Never in this class. Okay, now, I have a question. When you are finding the area of something, what are you essentially doing? Okay, so if I'm finding the area of a rectangle, what do I do to find the area of a rectangle? You multiply what? What two things? Length and width. Length and width. And when you get an answer, what units is it in? Inch is what? Squared. Squared. Squared is what? An exponent. So when I'm finding the volume of something, I am doing length times width times height, right? Length times width times height. So what do I get? My units come out in what? Something to what power? The third, okay? So essentially, when you are finding area or volume, you're finding exponential form, okay? 
okay? They're all exponents. So we're going to do a work problem with volume. <sighs> okay. An artist uses a cube-shaped block of ice to make an ice sculpture for a competition. Find the volume of the block of ice. Here's my block of ice. My, since it's a cube, all the measurements should be the same, right? Because a cube is made out of what shapes? Squares. Squares. And squares are equal, right? Equal. Yeah. So I have 20 as my length, 20 as my width, 20 as my height. How can I figure out what the volume of that cube is? Multiply or what? Do 20 times, do 20 to the third. Do 20 to the third. Beautiful, because it's 20 times 20 times 20, right? So if I, I could write this out as 20 times 20 times 20, right? Or I can say 20 to the third, because this is a cube. Now, if it was a rectangle, a rectangular prism, I would have to do length times width times height, and I would still get something cubed. But because my length, width, and height are all different, I can't just do 20 cubed. So what is 20 cubed, guys? 8,000 what? This is a measurement, so I need 8,000 what? Cubed. Inches. Inches. inches cubed. Beautiful. And that is my answer. 8,000 inches cubed. So their block of ice was 20 by 20 by 20. They were working with 8,000 inches cubed of ice. Oh. Pretty crazy, huh? Yeah. But have you guys ever seen ice sculptures? No. They're really cool. And in the winter time, like I want to say around December, January, down in Hamilton, you guys know where Hamilton is? No. Well, it's like 15 minutes from here. But in Hamilton, Ohio, they have an ice sculpture like day, like festival, and you can go watch people like carve things out of ice. It's really cool. You should go sometime. It's really fun. So, any questions on what we talked about today? No. Think you got this? It takes one minute to do because you're doing twice, right? Um, yes, because whenever you're doing.